All right, guys, it's the next day. How's everybody doing? So we're going to do these outriggers now. I got this angle cut. I'm going to just tack them up with the uh, MIG to hold things together, and then I'll uh, TIG weld them out when I get done. So let me make some tacks, and then I'll line the two up to get the right angles, and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. get this other one mirrored up against this guy. Like so. Now I got to put it out on my uh, ramp to see how much of this I have to cut off because as the two come up, they're going to have to clear each other. If you ever did this on the other side, these can only be so long. And I measured out my um, the ramp, and I measured out how how much these would be out here with the railroad tie for the counterbalance, and I'm within uh, about 12 pounds. So I think I'm going to start out by cutting these off at the length I know I need to. Uh, that I can only go as far out once I figure that out over there. I hope you guys get that. And then I'm going to start off by putting it at the rack with the uh, railroad track all the way at the very end. That'll give me the most amount of counterbalance. If it's if it's not if it's too much counterbalance and I don't have enough weight on the ramp, then I can slide the tie up. And the closer I get the the uh, not the tie but the track. Here, let me grab the track and then I'll show you. Okay, so this is my uh, counterbalance right here. This is about how far back I think I'm going to be able to set my track because I got to cut these off at 26 inches roughly from where this is out to here. And so this is all the weight that I'm going to have here on that counterbalance end of that. And what I plan on doing down here is I'll just make some half inch holes right there and there and run some rod through there. Plus I don't have to install it if I make these rods removable. I don't have to pack this whole thing up there because I will have to pack this uh, counterbalance. If I, if I decide to weld it out, I have to pack this up with it. Um, but I can always bolt it, try it out, and then bring it back home and weld it all up because I'm kind of stuck with the 26 inches so I may just commit. So anyways, all right, let me get back on it. All right, do a little pass with the TIG welder for you guys on the camera there. Pretty decent. Okay guys, there's two outriggers all done. Got it. So these are the outriggers for the counter uh, balance. And so I've drilled a couple holes in this one for the 3 8 And down here this is going to be uh, the um, 
half inch hole for the bar to go through to hold the uh, railroad track in so uh, let me just uh, I'm just gonna make a mark through these onto the one I haven't drilled yet so I can get them in the same spot Let's go ahead and drill one of these holes Okay, so that's the two three-eighths holes, so I'll get the other half-inch holes drilled, and then I'll bring you guys back. Okay, so now that I got the uh, half-inch holes done for these uh, rods to go through, this is what's going to uh, hold my track in place. I got one on each side of this, so this will allow this to go up and down without this falling out. And... Uh, I don't think it once it once it sets against her it probably will never move. I could have made it tighter, but I don't see the point. And if I find that it's too much counterbalance out here, well then I can always make a couple other holes up a little closer. But I don't think it's going to be with as much uh, as much length as the ramp is and how heavy it was. Um, okay, so now I'm going to mock up the uh, outrigger on the actual ramp themselves. Okay, so now what I'm doing is uh, I'm going to drill a hole in this back one and leave this open because you'll see this angle that I got with the ramp. I don't know how the ramp is going to be in the upright position when it's locked up upright. If it's like this, then these will be out and that'll allow me to bring these because when you're going up to the ramp, I'd like to have these plumb to the world. And so that will allow me to uh, move this and I'll have one bolt in it there so I can dry fit it to there. So I'm going to drill one on each side and uh, then I'll get on to uh, mounting the, <coughs> the hinge onto the ramp part. Okay, so I got this level in the truck and I got uh, one hole drilled on this one. I just wanted to make sure that I was somewhat close on this thing so I got this in the middle and I got this squared up pretty good out on the end here so uh, we're going to call that that good and drill my other pivoting hole in that one okay well the good news is that I'm not going to have to cut the track down to fit in here in fact I'm going to end up putting a, a piece of something across here to hold these actually together and then the there's my track and then the rods will I'll put nuts on the end here weld them on and put some little uh, I got some little, little uh, pin clips for like a trailer uh, that I can put in in that side so I can quick remove okay guys this is getting a little excited now so uh, a little exciting because I'm actually going to uh, weld part of this hinge to the ramp here so I'm going to tack it like usual with the MIG just to hold things in place and look things over and then I'll finish her up with the TIG welder. But I'll burn that in real good with the TIG. So let's flip this guy over. Leverage out there. So there's our hinge. I think that works pretty good. And I got a nice little, whoop, little bit of bed liner there. <laughs> All right, that's cool. This I might put a little uh, sliver of metal in there. It's a little wide there because this thing was like this, but down here I can close that up nice with the tip. Yeah. 
would be in the full upright position like that and I got this little bit of an angle on here that's why I put that piece down here because I want this when this ramp is in the end position I want it to be back a little bit so I can put this pin that we have in there already in there and it doesn't even have to go to 90 you know it's probably ever only ever going to go like this so that's good but this seems to be working good got my little i don't know if i showed you guys a little fillet welds if you can see that or not but anyways yeah i'll uh show you the uh welder that i'm using it's small it's a really good little welder for the uh small really small material for like sheet metal and stuff but it's not real good for thick stuff it's a little 135 right there uh east wood and uh, for this stuff, I got it turned way up and then wire speed about half. Well, guys, I had planned on TIG welding this out, but I bought the wrong tungsten today. I bought one eighth instead of uh, 330 seconds. So I just ran a MIG weld across there just to try it out on the rack. I can take my TIG and melt that in real easy. In fact, it'll be nice to just go over it and uh, melt it in. But that'll, that'll hold it for this. And then here's my hinge here so yeah we're all ready to go test fit in the morning hey everyone well it's the next morning it's uh fitment time here before i take this thing home and fully weld it up so everything's going really good uh so far i got the this back hinge plate in uh everything clears there the ramp is out um yeah, actually with no counterweight at all it pulls in pretty pretty good and let me show you if i can uh this little pin here it still works to hold that all right so now i'm just uh putting in to place these uh the counterweights here you guys what i'm going to do here is right up here i've got a mark down here and across so i can level this out with this upper piece actually ended up working pretty good because all you want to make sure that you do is when this is out like this i just easily that's just super easy that's all as easy as it was before and now when we're up here and locked in place like this when we go back down it's got that little bit sticking out there you can pull your truck right up alongside of it compared to this. So you're a lot less likely to have a problem with this guy now. All right. Well, I'm going to do some finish work on it and get back to you guys. Well, I got these relief cuts up there. And then I got the track to actually bottom out on uh, the rack back there too. So it's really nice and strong. What I'm going to do is right back here where this locks in i'm going to make a little tab running off the back of here with a little hole in it so this can find that and we should be good all right guys uh i'll take you home with me and uh we'll finish her up all right i'm back home now just finishing this up uh, i ran a pass of the mig across here last night so today i got new tungsten i just came in and and hit every once in a while with the TIG across here, both sides, it's it's plenty good. So, all right, I'll bring you guys back uh, for little, little bits as I'm putting it together. And so, you know, I'm doing a little bit better. A little bit of porosity. I don't know why that pops up once in a while there, but then it burns out and does real nice there. So pretty good overall. Those are nice penetration there. Okay, you got a little stop for a little pin right there. That'll uh, pin it uh, in the up position. And uh, this will stop it from going too far past the up position. I'm going to 
cut a little bit. That's hot. I just welded it. Uh, cut a little of that off. We just uh, connect the back here with a piece of metal and get ready for our track to go on there. Okay. All right, well, I just came over tonight and got the uh, ramp all uh, bolted up. I did not paint the back side of this. Can't believe that. I got to touch that up. But I got my little uh, pins through here. I'm going to put some brighter yellow on there when it dries up in here. And those come out if you ever want to take that track out of there. And uh, yeah, so let me take you up. Uh, tucked away nice. Trucks can pull in here a lot closer now. And uh, yeah, I like that. Come right on in. So I'll go up here and show you a couple of things that I made up here. Um, I do have to, I like this little addition here, how it come, comes up and locks into that hole. Although I have to take about an eighth of an inch off there. It's a little sticky right now because it's all the way in against here and it's just barely, barely at the edge here. Let me put the camera down for half a second so I can open it up with two hands. So I can just, I, I got a chain on there just in case. It should ever come down when there's not a truck there. It does catch it just slightly before everything bottoms out. And uh, with that on the truck, it's even strong right now. No stress on the hinges as far as I can tell at all. So that's all good. I redid the deal out here for the guys. There was some line on there. I wired it. It's nice and tight now. So they'll really love that. And uh, I'll go ahead and just, we reached out before and just go ahead and grab it. It's a nice, easy pull now. Boom. And then of course, if this thing uh, cleared there, it would go in that little hole. But I'll go ahead and take Cut that off tomorrow, cut a little extra chain off. And then um, I have a little dog right down there too. Okay, so the little dog I was talking about is this guy right here. So I've just got to bend that out a little bit because when you come up all the way here, the angle's not right, but see how that'll stop this from going uh, back this way towards uh, me too far. That, that'll stop it right, right down there. Okay, well, that's about it, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Hope you liked the video. And until next time, everybody be safe.